So the next type of series we're going to discuss are what are called alternating series. And alternating series are probably about the easiest of all the series to deal with, um, just because the test to show convergence or divergence is relatively straightforward. So again, an example of an alternating series could be 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth minus 1 six, etc. So notice the alternating refers to the signs. Okay, so this is an alternating series. And I could write this series compactly as negative 1 to the n plus 1 of 1 over n. Okay, the thing to look for that will help you spot an alternating series will be a negative 1 basically to a power. Um, again, you should convince yourself if you start writing out terms that you will in fact get a series where the signs alternate back and forth. If not, you can't do what we're about to do. So kind of an example of something that's not an alternating series, maybe just a very trivial example, would be negative 1 to the 2n. Okay, so if they were trying to, you know, confuse you, you can think, oh, okay, well, I see a negative 1 to a power. This is an alternating series. But notice if you plug 1 in, you'll get negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. If you plug n equals 2 in, you'll get negative 1 to the fourth, which again is going to give you a positive 1. So it's actually not alternating at all if you start writing out some terms. Um, but in general, I don't think many people will try to sneak like one of these in on you. But again, be careful. Um, somebody may very well do it on an exam. So, But in general, look for this negative 1 raised to a power. That'll be a pretty good clue that you have an alternating series. And it says to show convergence or divergence, all you have to do is two things. So suppose um, I have negative 1 to some power. The stuff that's kind of to the right of the negative 1, in this case it was my 1 over n, we'll call that, they abbreviate that typically as b sub n. And to show convergence or divergence, well to show convergence, you have to show two things. One, you have to show that the b sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to b sub n, and all that means is that the b sub n's are decreasing. And a lot of books will say that they have to, that this has to hold for all values of n. That's not exactly true at all. Um, as long as it eventually decreases, so maybe, um, you know, maybe I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, well clearly um, the, the, the terms are not decreasing, but suppose after it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, from there on it does start decreasing. So 8, 7, 6, 5.5, 5.3, 5.2, 5.1. .5, as, as long as the series, the B sub n's are eventually decreasing. Um, is the idea, but most books will say this has to hold for all n, just to kind of make it as simple as possible. The other thing you have to show is we show that the limit as n goes to infinity of the b sub n's equal zero, and if that happens, then you have an alternating series that's going to converge. If not, well, then it's going to diverge. So a very simple example of this Let's look at the example we started with. n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n of 1 over n. Well, this is my b sub n. So the first case, 1 over n, well, again, there's two ways to justify decreasing. You can either use the first derivative test. In this case, clearly, um, if I plug in n plus 1, that's going to be smaller than just when n is in the denominator for all n greater than or equal to 1. Right? You get 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4. So it's pretty clear that this is a decreasing, um, you have decreasing terms here. The next thing is to show that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n equals 0. 
Well, again, that's pretty trivial um, that that happens. If the denominator is getting big, 1 over a big number is 0. And, well, now we're done. That implies that this original alternating series does, in fact, converge. So notice it's very important to have the, the negative 1 to the n power here. If we didn't have that, plain old 1 over to the n, remember that's called the harmonic series, and that's a special case of the p series, where p is equal to 1, and this would now be a divergent series without the negative 1 to the n. But with that negative 1 to the n in there, this is a convergent series, and we're now finished. So here's a basic example. Um, look around for a couple other videos. I'm definitely going to do some more of these, but I think by and large, alternating series are probably about as easy as the series are going to be when it comes to showing diverging or um, divergence or convergence.